on the paste. <laughs> but it would be sad. But with that said, I think a new president would be exciting. I feel like Barack Obama right now, President Obama, he seems like he's about ready to move on. He's very different than other presidents we've had in that I don't think he actually cares what we think about him. You know, President Clinton, well, Bill Clinton, he'd be president again tomorrow if you let him. He would do it again tomorrow. He needed our love and approval more than anything. He was like a rock and roll. He's like Bruce Springsteen. He played the songs we wanted to hear. Barack Obama's like a jazz musician who's just playing weird shit that only he and his friends get. And you pretend you go like, you know that thing when people play jazz and you go, yeah, man, that's really good. And then afterwards you're like, I didn't understand any of that. Like, why aren't there lyrics? Why can't there be lyrics in songs? I like choruses. <laughs> but I will say, now that you know we're into the second half of the second term, looking back, there to me, there is no bigger waste of time or money than the second inauguration. The second inauguration, because it, be, it like acts like a new beginning, but it's always just going to be another four years, just like the first four years. A second inauguration is much like when a couple renews their vows. Like when a married couple renews their vows. Whenever you hear that, my first thought is always, Oh, you almost got divorced. <laughs> That's sad. That's sad that you think that will fix it. <laughs> With that said, I understand how Barack Obama could be depressed with the state of governing this country. Basically, here's what I think he realized, which is there are people that he just is never going to change their mind. Basically, like, if you, after the last six years, if you still believe there is no such thing as climate change, after everything that's happened in the last six years, you are never going to believe there is such a thing as climate change. If you don't believe after the last six years that there needs to be a little bit, just a little bit more gun control, you are never gonna believe there needs to be a little bit more gun control. At this point, a giant tornado could form and just start whipping its way across America. And that tornado could pick up every handgun in this country and just start indiscriminately firing that handgun, all those handguns at the populace. It would finally dissipate and you would say to those people, will you admit now, after the gun tornado, that we have a climate change and gun control issue? And those people would say, no, all of that happened because you let gays marry. <laughs> There are two kinds of people that always say they worry about future generations. There are environmentalists who say, uh, you know, we need to take care of better care of the earth because of future generations. And then there are people who say, uh, we cannot leave future generations with all this debt. I do think uh, there's a difference in the two. If the earth dies, there's no real plan B. If the earth falls apart due to global warming, we have nowhere else to live. Whereas there is a plan B with the debt, and I can't believe people don't say it more often, which is this. Uh, I just don't think we're going to pay it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the American way, and that's why... I, that's why I'm never upset when people complain about how we're spending all so much. We're like bringing up the national debt based on uh, paying, uh, you know, for uh, our defense and paying for, you know, our armed services, because I think eventually, you know, someone like China is going to come and get that money back, and we're going to want that. They're going to say, why do you spend all this money on an army? And we'll say, well, it's interesting that you would ask. <laughs> it's because we're not going to pay you back. <laughs> <laughs> also, the other thing that's always interesting to me is, of course, the people, you know, I think everyone always thinks, oh, it's China. They're the ones, you know, we all, we all most of our money to China. But, um... Of course, we owe most of the debt to ourselves. We owe, you know, Americans hold the most uh, U.S. debt. And like, how, what, how little could you care about the own debt? Like, when you make deals, that's like saying, oh, you know what, I'll eat the pizza today, but tomorrow I'm gonna exercise. But then the next day comes, you're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna have more pizza. <laughs> that's how this is gonna play out. I worry about everything, I worry all the time. I do worry about the economy a lot. I worry about the economy because I don't feel like a lot has changed since the economy fell apart in 2007, 2008. And what we learned was that all the world's economies are tied together, and if one falls, it could take everything else with it. And I'm especially worried about that because of everything that's happening in Europe. Because of the Euro, you have all these countries that are tied to one currency, and if one falls, it could take the other 16 with it, and then take us with that. And that's why I'm up at night worrying about Greece. Because I feel like We've been worrying about Greece for five years, and people keep going on TV saying, you don't have to worry about the Greek economy, it's going to bounce back. To which I want to say, is it? Because I'm pretty sure it's a yogurt-based economy. 
The thing they're proudest of is ruins. That's the stuff they want you to see the most. Is shit in disrepair. But I feel bad for some of these uh, countries, excuse me, on the Euro, because you know, at least here we can change our, our you know, currency, we can, we can adjust it, because we're just one country, but there you have 17 countries, and they have to, in order to change their currency, they have to have a unanimous vote. And uh, that's really problematic uh, when you have 17 countries. Like, I can't, ima I can't make dinner plans with three friends. I can't imagine how hard it would be if we all spoke a different language and our grandparents killed each other in World War II. <laughs> Because that is a big deal. World War II is a long time ago to us. It's fucking yesterday in Europe. And that is a problem because the one Euro the European economy that has their shit together is the German economy. But because of World War II, the Germans can't be the ones to come into a meeting with everybody and say, If everyone would be quiet! <laughs> we have a plan! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, but I'm pulling for Europe. I love Europe a great deal. I lived in Europe for a couple of years, uh, right after college. I lived in Amsterdam for two years. Mm. That always happens when you say you live in Amsterdam. There's always one or two people who are like, Woo! Yeah! I know why. I know why you lived in Amsterdam. Uh, but it's not why you think. I lived in Amsterdam for two years because weed is legal there. So we'll jump to conclusions. It's actually so easy to smoke marijuana in Amsterdam that I had to leave because you basically turn into another person. Like, you're totally normal talking the way I am now, and then after 12 months pass, you just turn into Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> you're just me, talking like me. 12 months pass, you wake up one morning, you're like, this is so right. You're like, yeah. You basically, like, sorry. <laughs> I jumped ahead to my next impression. <laughs> Wait for it, it'll come around, don't worry. You basically, you basically wake up after 12 months and you're like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> this is a really good way. I think I'm gonna go throw a frisbee to a golden retriever. <laughs> then after two years, you just turn into Owen Wilson, here it comes. 